Welcome today to the Manassas Church of the Brethren. It's so great to have you all here worshiping with us today. I hope this past week you received your copy of the October newsletter, either in your email box or in your actual mailbox. I'm gonna spend just a few minutes highlighting some events and activities that we have going on this month. The first thing that I wanna highlight is an outdoor service that we're having tonight, October 4th at 5.30 p.m. on our church lawn. We're excited during the service to welcome in two new members and to have a child dedication as well. Bring your own lawn chair, wear a mask for setup and for takedown. We'll be spacing 10 feet apart, but come and be a part of this worship time together at 5.30 tonight, October 4th. Also this month, we'll have two guest preachers as part of our worship services. Annual conference moderator Paul Mundy will be preaching on October 18th. And our very own Jeff Carter will be back on October 25th. He's the last of our guest preachers for our 125th anniversary celebration. And we're excited to be able to welcome him back into this space for worship. Um, I will be taking a spiritual retreat this month, October 19th through the 23rd. Um, it's a time for me to reconnect with God, to be in prayer, um, to be reading and, and in discernment as well. I pray that every one of you will find a time and opportunity this month. Maybe it can't be a full week, but whether it's a day or an afternoon or a morning where you also find time to reconnect with God, to be refreshed and re-strengthened in your faith um, and find some time to retreat as well. Next Sunday, we'll be hosting our annual crop walk um, virtually. You are welcome to walk where you are able. There's information in the newsletter about how to register yourself and to raise money as we end world hunger together. You are welcome to coordinate with some folks in your neighborhood or within the um, church if you want to walk with somebody else. Um, but it's a virtual walk this year and our mission service and outreach ministry team is putting that together. So we hope that you will be able to join us. Um, the Shepherd Spring is offering family fall retreats, much like they offered retreats over the summer for families. Um, it was such a success and so grateful for our families to have that time to retreat that um, they're offering it for families as well. So there are two weekends, October 16th through the 18th or October 30th through November 1st. And there's more information in your newsletter and in your e-blast about this opportunity to um, be part of hay rides and bonfires, pumpkin carving, music, crafts, hiking, and caving. It sounds like a lot of fun. So um, please take advantage of that opportunity at Shepherd Spring. We're also pretty excited this month. Our um, junior high youth are gonna get a chance to get together over Zoom for a game night on October 13th at 7 p.m. We're gonna be joining with junior high youth from the Northern Virginia congregations, the Church of the Brethren congregations. And so junior high youth, mark your calendars, take a look at your email parents and look for more information to come for this special game night for our junior high youth on October 13th. I think those are most of the announcements that I have from the newsletter, but there's a ton more in there and we do invite you to take a look. There's a calendar in there. There are birthdays and anniversaries that we wanna be able to celebrate this month. And we're excited to be able to continue in ministry together. For now, let us continue in this time of worship, centering our hearts, centering our minds, centering our spirits to be in worship together.
Good morning, everybody. Please join me in the call to worship. Today, we gather around God's table from near and far. We are the people of God. Though we differ in language, custom, and tradition, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. For there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We are one in God's spirit. We are one and together we remember our Lord Jesus, for we are the people of redemption. He gave himself up for us so we could be reconciled to God. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. 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 Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. 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 Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. 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 Today I'm going to be reading from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 12. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to our God forever and ever. Amen. For our children's story today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the songs we're singing in our worship. Today is World Communion Sunday, a time when we celebrate with congregations all over the world. 
in communion together. And so we thought it would be really great to sing songs from all over the world. So the first song we're singing this morning is Praise, Praise, Praise the Lord that originally came from a country in Africa called Cameroon. And I wanted to show you all where it's located. We are right here in the United States of America. And if you go across the Atlantic Ocean, you'll see the country of Nigeria, where there is a really large Church of the Brethren um, congregation there. And right next to Nigeria in the east is this country right here called Cameroon. So as we were singing praise, praise, praise the Lord this morning in our worship, we were singing with our brothers and sisters from Cameroon. Our second hymn today was Dona Nobis Pacem. Dona Nobis Pacem is, um, is Latin, which is a classical language. There really isn't anybody who is speaking Latin as their native language today, but Latin really started here in Italy um, in Rome. And when we sing these Latin words, we're reminded that we don't sing just with our brothers and sisters of today, but we sing with Christians throughout all sorts of generations and throughout history. Our third song today was, is Will Be. We haven't sung it yet. Fluye Espiritu Fluye. The language that we'll sing is Spanish. And I learned that the first time Fluye Espiritu Fluye was sung in the Church of the Brethren was when um, the Church of the Brethren youth from Puerto Rico brought it to a national youth conference and wanted to sing it to all the youth who came to conference that year. So remember, we are right here and Fluye Espiritu Fluye comes to us from Puerto Rico, which is down in this area in Latin America. And remember, Puerto Ricans are um, US citizens also, and so they come singing their Spanish with us um, today. And so we sing with our brothers and sisters from Puerto Rico. Our closing hymn today is Hamba Nati. Hamba Nati is from our brothers and sisters in South Africa. So again, we, we're right here and we're gonna come across the Atlantic Ocean and sing with our brothers and sisters in South Africa. Hamba Nati will be our closing hymn today. It's just really great to remember that we have brothers and sisters all over the world who are worshiping Jesus Christ with us. Even as we worship here as the Manassas Church of the Brethren here in the Manassas community, we worship with brothers and sisters throughout the United States and all throughout the world. And it's just so great to be able to worship and sing praises with all of our brothers and sisters from around the world. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time of worship where we can sing your praises in all different languages and know that you know what we're singing, that we get to sing your praises with brothers and sisters from all over the world in many different countries and many different languages. We give you thanks for all the diverse ways that we get to sing our praises to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Today is World Communion Sunday. This is a day of Christian unity focused on a common theme of sacrifice that Christ made for us. The first Sunday of October has become a time when Christians in every culture break bread and pour the cup to remember and affirm Christ as the leader of our church. Normally a time of gathering in our house of worship, we now gather wherever we may be. It could be on a couch in our living room or in our backyard. A common theme this Sunday is that the communion service will be a little bit different than what we're accustomed to. But as we center ourselves, let's consider all the different symbols with a communion service. The breaking of the bread, the drinking of the cup, reminds us of the sacrifices that Christ made for us. It's that spirit of giving for which each Christian is called, whether it's tithing, sharing a meal with someone in need, or a call to serve. <clears throat> Christ built our church community around giving, 
sharing, and receiving those gifts. I think it's a hallmark not only of our church, but of our denomination. The Brethren Church is one that I got to know when I was at Bridgewater, and previous to that experience, I really only knew it as a peace church. But what I really value there, and as I got to know the church better, is the commitment to service and how that is also a hallmark of our church. And so as we get ready to gather today and, and offer up our tithes and, and the things that we're willing to share, will you bow your head in with me uh, for a brief prayer? Dear God, Lord, thank you for this church and thank you for this denomination. Thank you for all the gifts that, that our, our church is willing to share with, with each other and with our community. And we only ask you to please bless these gifts in a manner in which that is holy. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we join our brothers and sisters from around the world in this time of worship and prayer. As we celebrate this World Communion Sunday, linking arms around the world, pour your grace into all of us. Grace us with your presence as we quietly and loudly pray to you. May we see in each other your light your love, 
and you. May it not matter our differences, our names, our languages, our looks, and our way of doing things. May what matter today and every day be that we are one in you. And as we pray, we call to mind our brothers and sisters who are unable to be present in person with us, as well as those who are unable to be with us in spirit. May you bring comfort to those who are grieving, lonely, heartbroken. May you bring comfort to those who are ill or broken in their spirit. May you strengthen those whose lives feel shattered, don't make sense, in crisis, experiencing loss. May you say the healing word to those who need it. May you bring the human touch of love to those who have not been touched. And may you love the unloved through us. May you shine your light into those whose world is covered in darkness. May you use us to feed the hungry, clothe the ones who need clothes, give a cup of water to those who are thirsty, shelter the homeless, visit the sick and those in prison. May lives be awakened to you, Lord, to your love and to your kingdom, whose door is always open to all. For it's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. As we have said, today is World Communion Sunday. If you've been worshiping with us over the past several years, then you know that on this Sunday, we celebrate with our deacons in a non-traditional love feast. We would have worship here in our sanctuary, and then we would make our way down to the fellowship center to share a simple meal, to wash each other's feet, and to share in a bread and cup communion. We're not celebrating love feast like we're used to. So I thought it would be really important for us to think a little bit about love feast. Why do we celebrate it? What are we celebrating? And why we do what we do? 
We always have a basin. We take a towel, we wrap it around our waist. We get this from the text in John 13, on the night that Jesus was betrayed. He had eaten a meal with his disciples. He knew that Judas Iscariot would betray him. He even knew that Peter would deny him. And yet he got up from the table, wrapped a towel around his waist. He took some water and he poured it into a basin. And he got on his hands and his knees to humbly serve his disciples, to wash their feet. You may also remember Simon Peter's response. It's probably a lot like many of ours. Jesus, you're not going to wash my feet. Surely it's awkward when we're so independent, we're so capable of serving ourselves, why would we want somebody, even our Jesus, our teacher, to get on his hands and knees and wash our feet? It's awkward to let somebody, even another church member in our faith community, to wash our feet. And yet Jesus says, Peter, let me wash your feet. And then Simon Peter says, oh, then wash my head and my hands and all of me. And Jesus says, only your feet need to be cleaned. I think oftentimes we respond to this love feast much like Jesus in the way that we want to humbly serve one another. And much like Peter, who wonders why we need somebody else to wash our feet And I think about this time apart, when we're not meeting in the fellowship center, when we're not washing each other's feet literally. What does feet washing look like today? What does it look like for us to wrap a towel around our waist, to pour water into a basin, and to humbly serve our neighbors. For many of us, that means wearing a mask when we're out in public, as our medical professionals have advised us to do. For many of us, it means picking up groceries while we're out and about for neighbors and dropping it on their front stoop. For some of us, it means calling a friend that we haven't talked to in a while a family member we haven't been able to see, to check in, to see how we can pray for them. For some of us, it may be to put a meal together, to cook for someone else who's recovering from surgery or um, dealing with the loss of a loved one. And we just drop a meal off to say, I love you. But here's the thing about what Jesus did on that night when he washed his disciples' feet. He knew that Judas Iscariot would betray him that night. And he knew it was only a matter of time before Peter denied him. In fact, that text in John 13 that we so often read goes on in the following verses where Jesus specifically calls out his disciples who are going to betray him and deny him. What does it look like for us when we are so politically divided in this nation, when our communities are being torn apart almost in two? What does it look like for us in this day and age to grab a towel, wrap it around our waist, to pour water into a basin, and to wash the feet of those who have betrayed us, or denied us, those we're in a disagreement with, those who have hurt us in some way? What are the ways that Jesus is calling us to be his hands and feet for this day, 
for this time on this particular World Communion Sunday. May his actions and his calling on our life be what guides us forward. Amen. Humba nati kalului tu. Humba nati kalului tu. Humba nati kalului tu. Humba nati kalului tu. Kalulu kalulu kalului tu. Kalulu kalulu kalului tu. Kalulu kalulu kalului tu. Kalulu kalulu. Come walk with us, the journey is long. 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 The journey, the journey, 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 the journey is long. Share a burden and join in the song. 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 The journey, the journey, the journey is long. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. The journey. The journey, the journey is long. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. Come up, lift us and bring us new life. Come up, lift us and bring us new life. Come up, lift us and bring us new life. Come up, lift us and bring us new life. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. The journey. The journey, the journey is long. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. Give us peace when the journey is done. 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 The journey, the journey. The journey is long. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. The journey, the journey, the journey is long. Humba nati kuluwe tu. Humba nati As we go from this time of worship together, may we go joining hands with our brothers and sisters from all over the world who have worshiped with us. And may we go guided by Jesus Christ, who took his towel and washed feet. Amen.
It was so great having you worship with us today. If you've been part of our service, feel free to comment below. Let us know that you were here. Let us know how we can be praying for you this week. And we look forward to seeing you the next time we worship together.